Uh, so, Dr. Nami, what uh, what is the connection between vitamin D deficiency and sleep apnea? Vitamin D is critical in sleep apnea. So we actually get vitamin D from going outside in the sun. And uh, what uh, we actually absorb it through our skin. And vitamin D is really important because it's actually a precursor to a lot of different hormones um, and chemicals that our body actually needs in order to sleep, especially acetylcholine. Um, so vitamin D is really important in making sure that we are able to tell our body that it's time to go to sleep and it's time for us to rest and it's time for us to really rejuvenate. And vitamin D is also really important in inflammation. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. It actually helps our body reduce inflammation. And what we find in patients with sleep apnea is that they actually have a lot of different diseases. So vitamin D actually helps us sleep better, also helps us uh, fight inflammation, which is really what we want. Okay. Now, vitamin D doesn't cause sleep apnea, right? But having a vitamin D deficiency can make it worse. Is that right? Okay. So can uh, also like taking vitamin D supplements help with, uh, you know, improving the symptoms of sleep apnea? It absolutely does. And in fact, what we do in our practice is we actually test the amount of vitamin D that we have because we want to make sure that the vitamin D has been converted. And so we actually take a blood serum test to see what the vitamin D level is because everyone is different. So we want to customize what your vitamin D levels are going to be and also where you live. For example, if you live in the equator or near the equator, your vitamin D levels are going to be pretty stable all year round. Um, you know, if you're where you are in the Northeast, um, what's going to happen is the winters are really cold and there's not as much sun around. So your vitamin D levels need to be adjusted for that. So what we actually recommend is that we titrate. Um, that means that we figure out the exact amount of vitamin D, D levels that you need, and then also test it twice a year, which is summer and winter, so that we can adjust for you accordingly. Um, and that will make a massive difference in your sleep cycles and the rest cycles. And as we know, rest is very important um, in actually rejuvenating our bodies. So there's not just one recommended dose of vitamin D that that everybody should take to help with their sleep apnea. It's, it's really specific to each person. It is. The reason why is if you take too much vitamin D, it can actually be a problem as well. So you can get headaches, you can get lots of different things. Um, too much vitamin D can be problematic. So what we really want to do is be specific in the amount of vitamin D actually that you need. And we recommend um, doing that through a blood test. And can, can people just go outside, you know, spend, spend more time outside and get some more sun? And, you know, is that good for them? Or really is the vitamin D supplement really the way to go? Really, ideally, the best way that we can do this is by going out um, in the sun. So one of the things you always hear about is blue zones, right? So blue zones are really great because, and people are living longer there. And if you notice, blue zones are near the equator. And so those blue zones are really important because they're getting a lot of vitamin D, they're being outdoors, they're doing a lot of physical activity, they're also sleeping well, they're taking care of their health. And that's one of the factors that they never really looked at um, is the amount of vitamin D uh, that is actually uh, produced by our bodies. Everyone always equates blue zones to be blue zones because they think it's community, they think it's weather, but it's really a lot of it is a foundational vitamin D. And the reason why vitamin D is so important is because it's a precursor to a lot of our gut microbiome bacteria that we actually need in order to be healthy and to be able to live long. So when we have the right amount of vitamin D, it's going to help us make specific bacteria in our gut that's going to help us fight disease and dysfunction and be more balanced. Now, of course, we're told not to, you know, spend too much time in the sun, you know, getting sunburned or something like that is not good for our skin. Is it okay to wear a sunscreen outside? And can you still absorb vitamin D even though you're wearing a sunscreen? You can, absolutely. We, uh, you know, the amount of vitamin D we always like to say is an hour in the sun is usually really great. Um, an hour in direct sun, right? A lot of times we're, you know, moving, we're doing things, we're not necessarily just sitting in the sun and sunbathing. Um, majority of the time what we're doing is getting outside. And actually sunscreen does block vitamin D, but we also want to protect from having cancer or anything thing like that. So you actually absorb vitamin D outside. You can't absorb it through windows or anything like that. Um, so you actually need to go outside and get vitamin D. Uh, our skin actually is our biggest organ that makes vitamin D. And it's really great. Um, you know, absolutely, you know, we're, we're concerned about uh, cancer. So we really want to be 
conservative in the amount that we use. And that's what the reason why we titrate the amount of vitamin D each person needs. For example, you might need less vitamin D or more less exposure in the sun than I would. Um, I, you know, I have melanin, and so my skin is not going to absorb as much uh, vitamin D as yours would. So it's very different and very calculated for each person. Um, and looking at the vitamin D, D levels, uh, going back to your question, do you want to be outside? The answer is absolutely yes. You do at I would say about an hour a day is what we're really looking for. And that's going to give you the amount of vitamin D that you need. Um, and that's safe and that's comfortable and it's not going to cause uh, disease or dysfunction. Any side effects potentially to taking vitamin D supplements? If you have too much vitamin D, um, it can cause a HAVOC in a lot of systems. Um, vitamin D is actually not a vitamin, as I said earlier. Vitamin D is actually a hormone. And so that hormone is a precursor to estrogen, to testosterone, to thyroid, um, to a lot of different things. So too much vitamin D can be problematic as well. Um, so what we want to do is really control the amount of vitamin D that we actually have. It what is it about vitamin D that's actually improving uh, sleep apnea problems? You know, is it just that we're it's it's helping us to get a better night's sleep? You know, helping us to to feel more you know restful when we when we go to bed? Or what what's the situation there with vitamin D? Vitamin D actually helps um, really look at our clock. So vitamin D is a part of our circadian rhythm. Really, when we're outside in the sun, it signals our body that it's time to sleep. It it tells uh, it tells our body that it's time to rest and relax. When we get enough time in the sun or enough time with vitamin D, what we're getting is our, our body is knowing that, you know, it's not, um, you know, daytime when it's nighttime or it's not nighttime when it's daytime. So it really helps with our circadian rhythm and helping us uh, fall asleep, stay asleep and wake up um, in a timely manner where our bodies are rejuvenated. That's the whole function of vitamin D.